Hello. Uh, this is Math 101 50, Lesson 1. In this lesson, we will be solving linear equations. Now, in this course and in the next course, you will take pre calculus. You will be solving lots of different equations linear, quadratic, polynomial, rational, exponential, logarithmic, trigonometric. And very often, at the core or at some step or at the last step of solving any of these equations is solving linear equations. So when you're solving linear equations, there should be absolutely no hesitation into how to proceed. So we're going to look at some examples with linear equations with and without fractional coefficients. So for example, if you are asked to solve the following equation, we have 4 times 2x minus 6 in parentheses plus 9 equals 3x minus 7 plus 8x. So first of all, it's important to recognize that this is in fact a linear equation. It makes it linear that the there's only numbers such as 6, 9, and the only powers of x that appear here is 1. Now all linear equations you should be able to eventually manipulate to get into the form ax equals b and then you divide by a and you get the solution. So that is our goal is to rewrite this linear equation so that all terms with x are on one side, all terms without x is on the other side, and uh, then we solve for x. So the first step here is to distribute and get rid of all the parentheses, because these x's, the 2x minus 6 and the x minus 7, they're trapped inside the parentheses, and so you cannot get all the x's on one side all the, and all the numbers on the other side if your variable, the x, is still trapped in the parentheses. So first step is we distribute. We have 8x minus 24. The most common mistake is to forget to distribute to the second term of the binomial. So most common mistake is to multiply 4 times 2x and then forget to multiply 4 times the negative 6. On this side, we have 3x minus 21 plus 8x. Now there's a lot of terms here, and we can start uh, putting x's on one side and numbers on the other side, or we can first um, collect like terms on both sides. So on the left hand side we have 8x, we combine the constant terms and we get minus 15. On this side we combine the x terms and we get 11x minus 21. Now I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides, and I'm going to get negative 15 equals 3x minus 21. And I'm going to add 21 to both sides, and I'm going to get 6 equals 3x. So now we have simplified this complicated linear equation into something of the form ax plus b, and now we divide both sides by 3, and we get that our answer is x equals 2. As with any equation, you can always check your answer by plugging in x equals 2 in the original equation and making sure both sides equal to the same thing. In the next example, we're also going to see a linear equation, but this time we're going to have some fractions as coefficients. So we have 41 over 9 equals 5 halves times x plus 2 thirds minus 1 third times x. Okay, so this is still a linear equation. There are no x's in the denominator. If the x was in the denominator, this would be a rational equation. We will be doing those later in the course. But all the x's are in the numerator. And just kind of a note on notation, I'll point this out again, that if you have something like 
1 third x. This is the same thing as just writing coefficient in front of x, like 2x. And this is the exact same thing as writing x in the numerator. So these are just completely equivalent notations. Sometimes the x is written in the middle next to the fraction, and sometimes it's written in the numerator. These are the exact same thing. Sometimes one notation is preferable to the other. Just like with the previous equation, we want to get all the x's on one side and all the terms without x's on the other side. And just like in the previous equation, the x is in the parentheses here, so we need to expand first. It is our choice to either first clear the denominators and then distribute the parentheses or vice versa. There's several different ways of solving these equations. The ones, the manner in which I'm solving it is just one of them. So first I'm going to distribute the parentheses. So 5 halves times x plus, now I have 5 halves times 2 thirds, which becomes 5 thirds, the 2's cancel, minus 1 third times x. So at this, at this time I want to clear all fractions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything, both sides of the equation, by the least common multiple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 18. And why 18? Because 18 is the least common multiple of 2, 3, and 9. So this is why I'm going to multiply both sides by 15, by 18. And I'm going to, you don't have to write this step, but I like to write this step to point out exactly what am I multiplying. And then you can see what is going to cancel with what. So every single term in my equation, I am going to multiply by 18. So that is exactly what I did in this step. I have not simplified anything yet, that's the next step, but I have multiplied every single term by 18. And now what do I have? Well, 18 divided by 9 is 2. 2 times 41 is 82. Here I have 18 divided by 2 is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. I have 45x here. Next, 18 divided by 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So I have 30 here. And the last one, 18 divided by 3 is 6. And I have minus 6x. So what I have done here is I have converted my linear equation with, fra with rational coefficients, with fractions as coefficients, to a regular linear equation. And now again, I combine like terms. 45x with minus 6x becomes 39x. I subtract 30 from both sides, and I get 52 equals 39x. And then I finally get that x is 52 divided by 39, and if I simplify this fraction, is becomes 4 thirds. So the solution to this linear equation is x equals 4 thirds. I could have also cleared the denominators in the very first step instead of distributing the fraction. That's a matter of principle. Uh, that's a matter of preference. But whatever you decide, 
um, clearing the fractions is always a good idea. Let's look at another example with a linear equation with fractional coefficients. Again, we are asked to solve. In this example, our variable is n. It doesn't matter what the variable is, as long as it's one variable with power at most with power only one, it's going to be a linear equation. Here we have 7 sixths minus 4n over 3 equals to minus 3n over 2 plus 2 times n plus 3 halves. And again, just as a note on notation, as I noted before, you have something like 3n divided by 2. That is the same thing as writing 3 halves times n. You can either write it in the numerator or in the middle next to the fraction. They mean the same thing. In this example, like the last one, I prefer to, to distribute the parentheses first. So I have 7 6 minus 4n divided by 3 equals minus 3n divided by 2, 2 times n, and then 2 times 3 halves is going to give me just 3. Now, I'm going to multiply by the least common denominator. I am going to multiply both sides by 6. 6 is the least common multiple of 6 and 3. And again, I will explicitly write this. So I'm going to multiply 7 sixths by 6. You don't have to write this step, but it's helpful to avoid mistakes and see where the cancellations are actually happening. Another common mistake is to forget to multiply the non-fractional terms by, by what you're multiplying by. So you still have to multiply the term that are not fractions by 6 because we're multiplying both sides of the equation by 6. We can do this. We can do this because we, if we, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we do to the other side. ready to simplify. 6 times 7, 6. The 6 is cancel. We get 7. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 times 4n is 8n. There's a minus out front here. No, don't forget that minus. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have 3 times negative 3n, which is minus 9n. Here we have 12n and then plus 18. And again, we combine the like terms. On the right-hand side, minus 9n plus 12n is 3n. And now we put things on different sides. So we can subtract 3n from both sides. And we get minus 7 minus 11n equals 18. Then we can subtract 7 from both sides. And we get negative 11n equals 11. And finally, our answer is that n is negative 1. And again, you're always welcome to check to plug in n equals negative 1 into the original equation and make sure that both sides are equal. So whatever you do with any equation, especially linear equations, is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side.